Hey guys, happy Sunday. This is your girl, Miss Debs. I'm coming to you with my daily strength for women. I do three for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this first one I'm about to do, I love it because it's dear to my heart for personal reasons for me. It's called No Condemnation. Straightening up, Jesus said to her, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go from now on. Sin no more. That's John 8, 10. Most of us know the story of the woman caught, caught in adultery. One of the intriguing moments was when Jesus was questioned about whether or not the woman should be stoned. His response is to stoop down and start writing in the dirt. Jesus' action of stooping in the dirt literally literally defines one interpretation of the word grace. As they all stood casting judgment, Jesus removed himself from the accusers, stooping low and occupying himself, himself elsewhere. It spoke volume about his lack of participation in the crowd's judgment. Because of Jesus' distraction, the eyes of the onlookers were drawn off the woman, perhaps lifting a portion of her shame. With their attention focused on Jesus, he said the words that saved the woman's life. Let him who has never sinned cast the first stone. One by one, the accusers walked away. Can you see that Jesus is the only one qualified to condemn you? And he chose to condemn himself instead. You are free and clean because of the grace of Jesus Christ. How beautiful is that, guy? The second one is called Sleep Isn't Enough. Each time he said, my grace is all you need, my power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's 2 Corinthians 12, 9. No matter how much Lynn rests or sleeps, it's never enough. With rosy cheeks and a bright smile, she looks healthy as can be. But sometimes looks can be deceptive. Lynn has multiple chronic health issues. None of these things are visible to the naked eye, but they are apparent to her on a daily basis. Where many people get six or eight hours of sleep and wake up the next morning refreshed and energized, Lynn often sleeps, often wakes up feeling as if she hasn't even been to bed. The sort of fatigue and pain can lead to distress and despair. But you never know it by meeting Lynn. Her sweet spirit and smile touch everyone she meets. She has learned that God's grace is enough for the difficult days. Her testing times have become her testimony. Lynn has that even when she doesn't understand why she has to deal with fatigue and pain each day. She can trust the one who knows what's best. How can you rest in God through difficult days? Oh my God, that's beautiful, right guys? And here's the third and last. Nap time. Um, no, I'm sorry. This one is called Run With Endurance. As for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we, we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon, race with passion and determination. For the path has been already marked out before us. That's Hebrews 12.1. The believers who walked out their faith because us provide... No. The believers who walked out their faith before us provide both encouragement and examples to follow. They serve as testimonies of what God has to... What God can do through people who put their confidence in Him. God does not promise us lives free of pain and difficulty. What he does promise is that he will be with us and give us the strength we need to run this race. You can cast off everything that is hindering you from pursuing him. He will strip your sin and selfishness away and give you endurance to run after him. How beautiful is that, guys? Let me read that part again. God does not promise us lives free of pain and difficulty. What he does promise is that he will be with us and give us the strength we need to run this race. You can cast off everything that is hindering you from pursuing him. He will strip your sin 
and selfishness away and give you endurance to run after him. What do you think of as having left the testimony of faith for you to follow? No, I'm sorry. It says, who do you think of as having left the testimony of faith for you to follow? I would say for me, it would have to be my mom. This woman went through so much in her life. She was um, a strong woman, a workaholic. She had been through so much in her life. And she always stood for God. She always believed that God would get her through. So she passed that on to me. I know it, it couldn't have been easy for my mom all the time because it's not easy for me. But it's good to know that we serve a mighty God who sits right there and holds our hands. And when we make mistakes, you can run to his loving arms and he will be there to watch over you and to cast his love upon you. He will say, go and sin no more, my child. God bless you.